everybody, it's Jared. Welcome back to the channel. As we look into the predictions of 2024 and we consider Florida, Florida on its own has the exact same affordability pressures the rest of the country does as buyers face a slightly higher price in 2023, but they also face incredibly high interest rates. But in consideration of what the new year brings, we can't lose sight of the fact that Florida holds one of the largest stock in the country of second home, vacation home, and non-owner property heading into a predictive recession in the early half of 2024. We consider the fact that over the past three years, thousands of homes in every major metro area of the state attracted remote workers who in the face of a coming recession, the chances they're holding on to that property and staying here is very grim. Many of those workers attracted here based on the prospects of a lower cost of living, which for many reasons enumerated on this channel is a fleeting reality at this point. And folks, many of those workers come from the north with much higher salaries. Those are gonna have to be replaced by locals with much lower salaries. Thirdly, we have to consider a massive element of our housing stock is owned by folks on retirement and fixed income whose financial status is no longer tenable in a high inflationary environment. And even with paid off mortgages, they're hit with record high HOA fees, the surprise of a shock insurance bill escalation. And with the recent condo collapse in the South, we've obviously have specialized assessments coming out of the woodwork to make sure these types of events don't happen again. Folks, with so many stories in the backdrop of the Florida landscape, whether you're a current homeowner here now, where you're considering buying in the year of 2024, I'm gonna give you three marketplaces that you should watch for for a great deal. And I'm gonna give you three more markets which you should be absolutely wary of and super careful if you own there now or if you're planning a relocation into one of these three areas in the future. I'm gonna start off with three top stories that are imperative for you to understand the lay of the landscape for you to start thinking about Florida real estate as we head into 2024. This video took me hours of preparation and research. And if you're thankful for it, please drop below really quick and smash the like button as a big thank you. And for all things Florida and real estate, consider subscribing to the channel because statistics show 90% of you are not. Record high mortgage levels are starting to take their toll. The mortgage rate is at 14 and three quarters percent. Ask not what the Great Reset can do for you. Ask what you can do for the Great Reset. Folks, the long-standing narrative has been to watch the Sunshine State, to watch the South, that it is literally bulletproof, that the armor of the Sunbelt region cannot be pierced. But folks, let's look at how fast inventory is selling in the Sunbelt region versus how many homes are popping up for sale to really get a key of just how far Florida is behind the rest of the nation from a housing perspective. Folks, take a look at this. This is the inventory count for the entire nation, okay, by the Federal Reserve provides this. If you shoot a line right here, okay, this is pandemic era, this gray beam you see standing through the middle of the graph. But if you were to shoot a line from before the pandemic period, you would see that the U.S. wide housing market typically kept for many years around 1.2 million houses in stock. Okay, so it would be above that a little bit. It would be beneath that. But overall, 1.2 million. Well, today it has bounced off the floor and has come back to record low inventory to where it is now at around 750,000 units, which is approximately double what it was at the base of 2021. And ultimately, you're going to hear the narrative amongst your realtor friends and ultimately data and economist pros, really the mortgage industry as well. They're hyping up the fact that we're so far away from a price crash because of historically low inventory. Well, that is true that inventory is low. However, that is a half truth because look at the next graph. This right here is the absorption rate of homes across America. Now, it doesn't matter if you had 10 homes on the market or 10 million. If you have enough buyers to wipe out inventory and buy it up as fast as the market, then the market will stay very balanced, extremely favorable to the seller, and the likelihood of prices going down is unlikely. Let me show you what I mean. The red part of this graph that you see across the base, these climbing marks, this is our inventory month over month. You can see a second ago, this graph I just showed you here in the Federal Reserve found on this end of the chart because this was the pandemic area where it collapsed. So you can see inventory is back up. And according to this chart, we're well below where we typically run. I showed you the graph a second ago that America runs really around 1.2 million, really before and after this great financial collapse took place in 2008. But folks, what you need to understand is that in history, the higher the inventory went, the longer it would take to absorb it all and the most motivated sellers would crash the market by reducing prices rapidly in order to escape the market. So let me show you what I mean. Back here, if you look around 2009, you can see that there was eight, nine months of supply, even sometimes nine months plus across 2009, 2010. Now I was heavily busy in the marketplace at this time 
selling bank owned homes. The price slashing that took place back in this era was huge. And folks, here again, it really was evident between a seven and a nine month supply. Now, this was bad. But you got to understand a lot of this was pre foreclosure with stuff sitting around, short sales that really the banks weren't ready for. So inventory stacked up on its own. People couldn't buy a huge section. This right here was when the banks actually took the inventory back. It really started to happen rapidly at the end of 08, really going into 2009 and 10. Then people absorbed it. Look at this. As the banks brought prices down, prices did fall, but absorption rates fell to six and seven months, which look at where we are now, folks. Right now, even at record low inventories, it takes 3.6 months for homes to come off the market. Now, you know this, that 3.6 months, we had a whole year of sales. Most every marketplace you look in was either up 1%, maybe was slightly down. You know, we just had a Case Shiller Index report this past week that showed, you know, half of the economy was up and half of it is down. And on the balance, everything was actually averaged up from a price point. So folks, it's really once you go over five months of supply that the seller starts to get anxious. So let's put this in perspective for Florida. Again, same chart. You can see here, I'm going back to 2015. This chart right here shows your Florida active inventory. This is all types, condos, townhomes, houses. They'll strip the line through, through the middle of history, okay? Before the pandemic, which was right here, you can see that we hovered around 150,000 homes on the market. Look at where we are present. We're just short of 120,000 listings and 150,000 is pre-pandemic, which means we're 15% away. Well, folks, look at the difference. Florida versus the rest of the country. The rest of the country is a full 40% away from pre-pandemic in the face of high interest rates, affordability, blocking and icing out the potential buyers, and even the high cost of living for selling many Floridians out of the home as it is. And folks, here's why. Look at this in Florida, okay? So here's why, folks. This is closed sales in Florida. You can see in the history of the last four or five years that we really hovered around 35,000 homes on the market. We would stay up or down that line. But you can see that we barely crested 40,000 once. And a lot of the time, we're actually below 30,000 units. So in essence, we're not holding a, a 35,000 per home sell-off across a 12-month stretch. And we know this is the case even on a national level because national total sell-off for 2023 is trending like 3.9 million homes. So let's look back in the history of the housing market on the left side of the graph. You can see back here we have 08, 9, 10. You can see that we consistently bounced right up to 30,000 homes quite a bit and really kind of carried around 25,000 homes for sale. But look at housing stock in Florida since then. Back then you had 8.7 million units. You got well over 10 million homes in housing stock and more being pushed because builders right now are pulling permits like crazy and still doing so heading into 2024, even on the face of the data, which shows buyers are backing out of the market. They're tepid. They're nervous anytime interest rates cruise over 7%. Folks, let me bring this point home. And what I said before was that Florida literally could be three to six months away from tremendous price slide, from the seven to nine months of absorption slide, which was where it was in 2009. So folks, check this out. The entire national marketplace right now has got 3.6 months of absorption rate. What that means, folks, simply put, is if you stop listing homes tomorrow, you forced every homeowner to not put a home on the market based on how fast buyers are qualifying and going to buy real estate, how long would it take to simply sell all the homes off there in the open marketplace without listing anything on top of it? And that total is 3.6 months. In Florida, it's 4.15. We're not absorbing as fast as what's getting here. At the same time, you have new home builders still very active in Florida. Not only they compete with the existing home seller, but statistically, they're reducing their prices faster and they're also spending 15 to 50,000 per house to buy the buyer's interest rate down so that they walk in with a five to 6% interest rate on a 30 year fixed. And they're paying your realtor not 15 grand, they're giving them another five or 10,000, some cases $100,000 commission to drag you into the office to buy their house. Now folks, here's the sketchy thing. I just showed you a second ago, for us to be in this 2009 territory when prices were crashing is all you need to be is in the seven to nine months of supply, meaning Stop listing everything. It takes you seven to nine months to sell everything off. Do you know how far Florida is from breaking into this territory where you are incredibly in danger on price? 
Let me show you. Statistically speaking, for the fact that we sell off right now around 29,000 homes per month out of inventory, we're going to go into seasonal low sell off rates of about 25,000 homes. Folks, all you've got to do is have this line go towards 175,000 homes based on the pace we're selling. And you are going to see home sellers dramatically cutting their price if they have to sell. And folks, look at the distance for us to make up 25,000 homes. Look at it. It was one month, two months. We've cruised. So you add 50,000 more. What does that take? Four more months? In the face of high interest rates, in the face of all the headwinds that Florida experiences, do we not think that that's possible? I mean, inventory is on a steady climb right now in the state. Folks, next thing I want to talk about is buyer demand in Florida and how will it continue in 2024? One thing you got to understand that has propped Florida up over most of the other states in the union, Florida attracts 30 to 40% of its buyers in terms of cash buyers. So we actually do attract a high percentage of buyers that will pay all cash for property. You understand a lot of those are investors and those investors are going to be disinterested in the marketplace. The other thing is that our market has long been set up because people move from the North and they sell a home from there and then they actually move and reinvest it here or they're using a retirement nest egg and paying off the home in cash. So all those things are considerable factors on whether we can count on 35 to 40% of our buyers to remain in cash. Let's look on screen here, folks. We've seen demand in Florida. I can show you graph after graph to show it absolutely collapsed. The left side of this mortgage graph is a 30-year fixed, shows you the end of July going into August. And really, interest rates spiraled all the way up to 8% last month, and they're coming back down. Anything over 7% in the last two years we've found is absolutely not exciting for our marketplace at all. Now, look at this. You can see from January of this year, the amount of pending homes, okay? This is all categories pending in Florida has just been falling month after month. By the way, check this out. This will complete the thought that we just had in the last minute about the fact that Florida is pacing behind the rest of the market because they're not absorbing their listings at the same rate. You can see this chart on screen is Florida pending inventory across all sale types, okay? This is condos, townhomes, and regular houses. You can see it plummeting from January of this year around 60,000 units. It's been declining even through the peak summer season and going straight into the ground. You can see it now sits at 40,000 units last month, which is way off, 30, 30 plus percent off from the start of the year. And here's why. But folks, let's look at why. Look at this. This is price reductions on all properties across the US. You can see right in the middle of the screen, you see where 2023 is right here? It's at 39.1%. So essentially all US houses the amount of inventory that had to be price reduced from the beginning of this year just dropped into summer. And then look where it ended up now. It's at four out of 10 homes in the US need a price reduction. Look at all prior years, you can see are really beneath us, except last year when we saw interest rates absolutely shock the market when 7.3% was a peak interest rate for the 30 year last fall and froze everything up and everybody really thought the world might be coming to an end in the housing market. We obviously know what's going on. Everybody in the state of Florida has been long believing that they're going to be fine. Maybe some people are sitting there thinking that there's a, there's a shot 2021 is coming around the bend again. You can look at inventory in any city in Florida and see a long list of dreamers with their house in the marketplace, not moving. The price hasn't changed hundreds of days on the market. Folks, it's statistical math that you are going to take a beating when you sell. You're either not ever going to sell or you are going to sell and you are statistically going to take way less than you think you are right now. Let me prove it. Look at this, folks. This is the statistical number that a person received against their asking price based on how long it took to sell in the market last month, right? Fascinating data. How much did a seller that sold in the first week get versus someone who sold four months on the marketplace. You can see right here. So this, by the way, is only homes under $500,000. This is the US Metro analysis. This is the entire country. And these are the most affordable homes. If your home sat on the market between three and four months, you are picking up 93.9%. .9%. You are taking on average $22,000 less than you thought you would. Over here, even at $500,000, you are cutting 5% off the price. If you're in the mid 200s, you lost 10%. If you were on the market for 120 days and you really didn't know what was happening and all of a sudden you got blindsided. Look at this, 500 to a million. Again, 91% of asking price. Look at this, 1 million to 2 million. Over 10% realized. Look at this, folks. 86.8% for a home sitting on the marketplace 
a million and two million. Sellers aren't getting it. They're just sitting there. If you've been on the market, you reduced it once and you're out in the cold and you've been on the market for four months, you don't have the value you think you do, probably. I don't know everybody's situation, but statistically speaking, if you're three to four months on the market and you're not moving through a price structure pattern, there's a good chance that when your home finally hits the record, when that home actually records and the price is set, there's a high statistical chance that you are way less than what you think you were gonna get in the very beginning. Folks, the point I'm making is that as homes in Florida age further on the market, you have a lot of buyers who are just electing go straight to the builder and get massive incentives at better prices. There's arguably cases in many parts of our state right now where you can go buy a home from a builder for a better price than you can buy a resale home. You got to understand in Florida, the historical difference between what people in history time, history of time pay as a premium to get a new house versus a resale home is 20%. There's supposedly a difference of a 20% margin. Well, that gap is now 4% today. And you got to understand that below the surface, the builder is probably giving the buyer anywhere from 30,000 to I've seen cases in the $900,000 price range of Florida where the builder is giving the buyer over $100,000 in incentives between the buyer, their agent, the entire party on that side of the sale that the home seller down the street that bought their home from that same builder two years ago, they can't afford to pack all that money into the sale. And folks, if we do tip more into a recessionary economy and inventory piles up further because of the sluggishness of our resale market and our homeowners really not reducing prices, when the reckoning comes and prices start to actually hit the wire, you could see, okay? I'm not, I'm not predicting a complete collapse of price. I'm telling you that the real numbers of things aren't shaking out completely in the resale market just because a lot of sellers right now are dragging their feet, kicking and screaming to the sale process. So some of them have to sell, the reckoning will come. All right, folks, let's dive in the data. Before I start, Reventure app, if you are interested in this data, I have zero affiliate relationship with Nick and uh, Reventure, but I love his product and I have tried a few other mainstreamers. Credit's his, it's not an expensive product. It is a monthly cost. Check them out if you're interested. Let's jump into the data. The first thing I wanna show you is sale inventory growth year over year. So where is inventory in Florida spiking over the past year? Now you can see the darker it is, the higher it is against the entire average. You can see areas like Tallahassee, Gainesville, those college towns are holding their own. And look at Central Florida folks, Orlando, Tampa, are some of the lowest year over year property growth. I, I gotta tell you, as much as people are gonna tell you that, hey, look, you know, market's tipping over, a lot of the negative numbers are coming out of the Southwest. They're even starting to trickle into the, the ironclad part of the state, the Southeast, really up against like West Palm Beach, the north side of the Miami market, starting to pile up some inventory there as well. On the softer side, you've got a little bit of a jump in Fort Walton Beach, Panama City. These are commonly making them list of my waterfront type lists where you start to see areas against the water, you can start to find value because they're coming down. Look at Northport, Sarasota, Brainton, 62% year over year. Punta Gorda, 129%. Cape Coral, Fort Myers, 100% plus. Naples starting to make a move, folks. Naples has not been really making the list a lot, but you're starting to see Naples making a move where inventory is coming up there. It is still much lower, but it is starting to climb. And I would say the same again, north side. I'm not in a county view, but you'd see West Palm Beach and really the area up here against Port St. Lucie starting to climb. Port St. Lucie only 16%. Marathon Key West area at 37% over last year. So you're starting to see inventory gain ground there. For those of you concerned about the East Coast, this stretch of area really against the water, I would say south of the Daytona Beach area has actually held really strong going all the way down to like Homestead, Florida. Um, but again, I think if you're going to see trouble in the southeast part, it's probably going to be somewhere in here first in terms of gaining ground. I cannot believe, folks, Jacksonville is still super tight on inventory. Palatka, the same thing. Okeechobee. And again, these are areas that are like cheap. I mean, they're just more affordable. I don't, I don't mean to say that against Jacksonville, but Jacksonville is the lowest cost major metro in the Florida marketplaces. Now, folks, let's look at price cutting. Look at price cuts in Jacksonville. They're one in three. So they're high, even though we see inventory low. So you're starting to see sellers in Jacksonville do not want to mess around and find out what happens if they do not take action enough. Anywhere in these other marketplaces, you would not see 30% price cuts with year over year inventory. The village is going up 31.5%. Tampa, look, as far as the central Florida market, Tampa St. Pete Clearwater is the highest price reduced MSA. And I would tell you it's because of Pinellas County. I don't have the county view here, but I guarantee you 
that if you were to look at Pinellas specifically, you are seeing a lightning rod of growth of inventory in that area. Again, Northport, Sarasota, Branson, you can see all these areas. Look, as I told you too, this again is price cuts percentage, folks. All listings in that area, we just saw earlier in this update that the entire country is at 39% and you're starting to see areas in Florida that are actually moving in that direction. So let me show you the pecking order of the most motivated sellers in list order. And, and again, you're going to see Louisiana up here in some of these other markets that trickled into my map view. But you can see Tampa's at the top. Pensacola's on its way, Palm Bay, Florida, Lakeland, Florida, Cape Coral, the villages, Punta Gorda. The interesting thing, folks, is that there in my world, my mind, there is no earthly reason why Cape Coral, Fort Myers is anywhere in the range of Jacksonville. If anybody should be over 40% by now, it's Cape Coral, Fort Myers. And again, the sad thing, folks, I did a lot of research this week in trying to figure out what the heck is going on with these hot pockets, these these escalating inventory mounts in specific spots. Like if I were to flip this chart in the counties, you would see weird zip codes, like a bunch of areas in Pinellas, a bunch of areas in Brains, a bunch of areas in the South. You have different hot spots in the Orlando area, for instance, all South Central Florida has big leaps of inventory coming out of Osceola County. Now these areas, I, I'm, I'm scratching my head saying, I, I'm, I gotta figure out where this decision making is coming from to sell these houses. And how come these people, as their inventory is blowing up because Cape Coral Fort Myers is the most active in terms of inventory, just climbing and not selling. There's many other YouTubers creating content in that area that are saying like, it's going crazy. And there's a lot of inventory, but folks, for it to trail the national at 31% on terms of how effective price cuts is crazy. And folks, here's the thing that I noticed because I jumped into the back of data I have access to as a realtor. And I went through Lee County, which is Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Osceola County, which is this area right here. The only commonalities I could find in all of these areas, including Pinellas County, including West Palm Beach, these areas are seeing inventory just run up. Folks, let me tell you another thing on this point that I noticed in Florida that is also true throughout the rest of the country. If you're buying near a very populous Airbnb area, be very, very careful. And this is not a uniform thing. One of the things that I pulled in data this week is I'm kind of messing around trying to prepare for the channel is I like to see areas where there is a huge density of listings versus the normal count of housing. Of all the homes in the market, what are the marketplaces where a big number of the housing stock is actually for sale? The other thing that I watch across the US, how many of those same markets are running very high year over year how many of them are having very high price cuts? And I'm telling you folks, there is a commonality all across the market. I think other YouTubers, if you watch this, content creators, do your research because you're gonna see around many, I would say probably 75% of Airbnb hotspots, those same counties or the next county over where the Airbnbs are still found servicing that area are seeing crazy trends taking place right now. These are areas like around Bend, Oregon, Another one was Seaver, Tennessee, home to many cash flow cabin owners around the Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area. Interestingly enough, Nashville is another top Airbnb site, but is holding far better except for a county or two on the outskirts of that area. But Seaver is shifting right now. You could go in there and find cabins been sitting on the market for five months, slashing prices. But focusing back on Florida and why we're seeing inventory climb here, the next thing I noticed is that a lot of the areas in Florida that are sitting and have huge jumps in inventory are homes in areas where there's very low mortgage percentage. And when I think of no mortgage, it supports still the Airbnb investor purchaser, but sadly it also is affecting retirees. You have areas like the villages right now where inventory is climbing off the charts. Re folks, remember in all of these areas, when you have absorption, falling. Look at this. You have the villages here on screen. The average run over the past five years is about 365 listings. And the villages right now with lower demand, it's at 429 homes. It's over the average. As a result, you have price cuts escalated there. So it's at 31%. It's the highest number on record in five years in that marketplace. Now folks, this is one of my favorite graphs to look at. This is inventory as a percentage of available homes. This shows you the density of listings in a given area. The ones that are bright red, have much higher percentages of inventory shifting versus the population. These are the ones that are leading the state. So you got the Miami areas at 1.8%, Naples 2.1%, Fort Myers and Punta Gorda 2.4-2.8 respectively. And again, look folks, you got Orlando 1.2% and Tampa at 1.2%. You can see the Central Florida marketplace, even Lakeland Winter Haven 
is at 1.46%, which is really pretty tight. Folks, notice the Central Florida markets in Jacksonville. You got Jacksonville, 1.2%, which by the way, folks, you say, what's history? If you looked at most of the state, it'd probably be around 1.6, okay? But look at this, 1.2, 1.2 in Orlando, 1.2 in Tampa. Lakeland Winter Haven's trailing behind at 1.4%. Northport, Bradenton, 1.7. And you get the college towns, Gainesville and Tallahassee, still really low, 1.3. Folks, watch this panhandle over the next couple of years. Look at this. You got 2.9% in Panama City, 2.9% in Fort Wall and Beach. And Pensacola is really probably hanging on to their average at a rate of 1.6%. Next thing we're looking at, folks, is the sale inventory month over month. So from one month to the next, who's gaining inventory? You can see the southern part of the state is leading the charge in adding inventory. Look at this, folks. Key West, 14% swing in one month. Look at Naples. I told you Naples is falling behind, but it is making a move in inventory. Some of these inland cheaper markets are not falling. And I would say that's probably, again, why you're seeing Jacksonville at 5%, Orlando at 7%, Daytona Beach, the Deltona area, it needed a break. It's only up by 5.9%, which is good. Panama City still bumped by 7%, Fort Walton 4 and Pensacola 6.4%. Are you curious where the mortgages are in Florida? This is a percentage of mortgaged ownership across the state. You can see Miami. I'm surprised Lakeland Winter Haven as well is at 57% along with Miami, some of the lowest in the state. Gainesville has 55%. Tallahassee has 58%. You start to cross the 60% threshold with Jacksonville, with Central Florida. Tampa has fewer mortgage properties in Central Florida. Again, because you're curious to see where the pain points might be as people get forced into situations where they need to sell. Folks, listen, just because we have low mortgage participation in some of the parts of the state, you have retirees. You gotta focus on the fact that you have people that unfortunately, we are likely going to see home insurance go up in 2024. It might balance out in 2025. This is my prediction. There's been a whole lot of things that have been brought in to stabilize insurance, but I don't think those things are gonna happen next year. They're not gonna bring a flood of insurance. So higher insurance next year, high taxes remain, high and increasing HOA costs. And folks, you have a lot of folks who can't afford to hang on, particularly through another insurance hike. So folks, take a look at this. This is shadow inventory in Florida. Shadow inventory is really defined as second homes, secondary homes, homes that are likely or very highly likely vacant much of the year. These are a concern to any population because in the face of coming predicted recession in 2024, these are the homes that get the ax. This is the bodies that get thrown overboard so that the ship stays afloat for most Americans. Look at this, folks. Key West, one in three. Naples, Marco Island, one in three. Cape Coral, one in five, almost one in four in Cape Coral. 23% of homes there are secondary, possibly vacant part of the year. Punta Gorda, one in five. These are huge, huge numbers on the Southwest, folks. Miami is over the 10% mark. You got 11.4% down there. Port St. Lucie, almost 15%. Now, folks, right here, Lakeland Winter Haven really comprises of Polk County, which even though it looks like it's between Tampa and Orlando, there's a huge section of the northeastern clip of this county, which is inundated with Airbnb serving Disney. You also have a little sliver of the southeastern part here coming into the Osceola County area where you have the same danger as well. And you're starting to see a lot of inventory pick up there. Obviously, Daytona Beach is exposed over 10%. Palaka, 14%. You see Jacksonville, Gainesville, Tallahassee, very low numbers. But look again on the panhandle, folks. Panama City, Fort Wall Beach could be some interesting times as those markets kind of shift hands. Folks, an incredible point for you if you are looking to buy in Florida that you need to think about is the idea of buying subject to, which means there is a move going on right now where if you are buying a home from someone who owns the house has financing on it that's FHA or VA, there is a chance you could buy subject to their mortgage, basically qualify and assume the mortgage and the very low interest rate they already have on the property. And folks, when you think about the fact that some of the sellers of these properties you might be buying have 2.75, three, three and a half percent interest rates, the house is not the only asset in that scenario. Having an interest rate of 3% is an asset on its own. We know this because many sellers are holding on to them and refusing to sell. Now, some of you might be saying, that sounds amazing. I would love to assume someone's 3%. Well, the thing is their house might've gone up 100,000 in value and you gotta figure out how to bring that money to the closing as well. May not be for everybody, but it's something. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.